We praise you, Jesus. Glory and honor to your name. Father, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We pour ourselves out on you right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the anointing that breaks off tiredness. Lord, thank you for the anointing that breaks every yoke, every stronghold, every deception, every lie of the enemy, every sickness, every bondage, every disease. We thank you, Father. We glorify your name, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Saints, just open your mouth and allow yourself to be lifted out of the realms of your ability over to the realms of glory. We're a glorious church. We're a glorious church, people. We're a glorious church. Touch heaven. This is how you touch heaven. You open your mouth and you start talking to the Father. You start pouring yourself out on the Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your glory. Thank you, Father, for the glory of heaven. Thank you, Father, for your presence in this place tonight. Tonight, Father. Thank you, Father, for taking us from glory to glory tonight, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are glorious. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you are here to meet and to answer every need of every person in this place. Thank you, Father, that you are in this place, Father, pouring forth of your spirit, and you're just waiting on us to be hungry and thirsty enough to receive what you are doing here in this place tonight. You're just waiting on us to reach out and touch, touch the realms of your glory, touch that hem of your garment, touch you, Father, so we'll never be the same. Lord, that this won't just be another Wednesday night, but this will be a Wednesday night that we mark down for eternity because we reached out like the woman with the issue of blood. We would not be denied. We would not be held back. We would not allow, Father, what's going on around us to affect us, but we would press in, Father, as a church, as a body coming together to see the realms of your glory manifested in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. We thank you, God, that with you and with the power of the Holy Spirit, that we never have to be the same another day. Not another day, but Father, we have we today is the first day of the rest of our life, and we can go into the new realms of glory that we have not experienced before because we press in to touch heaven. Because we press in to touch the realms of your glory. Because we are so hungry. We are so desperate to know you, to behold you, to see you, Father. In the fullness of your glory. Take us up, oh God, into the realms of your glory. Take us up, oh God, into the realms of your praise. Oh, Father God, as we refuse to stay the same, as we refuse to just sit back and look around and be mediocre. But, Father, we want... And we desire to be red hot and passionate for you every moment. Every moment, oh God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for the rivers of living water flowing in this place. We thank you, Father, for the rivers of living water flowing in this place. We thank you for your people refusing to be tired. We thank you, Father, for your people, Father, people that are being attacked with sickness right now and they've come pressing in to get healed. You reach out and touch heaven right now. People that have had situations going on in their life and they don't exactly know how to walk out the whole thing and how God wants them to walk it out right now, you touch heaven. You touch heaven and Father will come and speak to you. He will bring the change tonight and you don't have to walk down this path any longer. You don't have to be standing or sitting wondering, what do I do next and how do I, how do I walk this out? Because Father will come and he will reveal himself to you when you are hungry, when you are thirsty, when you will not take no for an answer, when you will not stand by and just let another day go by and let the years go 
by and let your life go by. But you will press in. You will press in at this moment. This is a moment in time of eternity for you to touch the realms of glory, to touch heaven, to not be satisfied with where you're at, but to be absolutely desperate to have more in God, to know Him, to behold Him, to not allow anything to hold you back. Anything to hold you back. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Father, we will touch you. We will touch the realms of glory. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you, Father, that you're making every person in this place earth-shaking, history-making, radical, radical people in your church today, Father, that will carry the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That will carry the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations, to their generation. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father, that all of our strength and all of our hope is in you. It is not of ourselves, but it's all of you, Father, that we don't have to depend upon ourselves, but we only need to depend upon you for the strength. For the strength to do whatever you've called us to do. For the strength and the anointing to walk it out. Hallelujah. For the strength in a tired body to press through the exhaustion to touch heaven. Hallelujah. For the strength in the sick body to be like the woman that had the issue of blood. That refused to let the impossibility of the circumstances of the crowd to hold her back. <clears throat> But with the last bit of strength that she had in her body, she pushed through. She pushed through the crowd. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know, Father's not leaving. Father's not leaving one person out. The Father's not leaving one person out. He's not leaving anybody out. If you're being left out, it's because you're leaving yourself out. Father's called you. He's anointed you. He's separated you. He has set you up on high. He's given you all of heaven. He's given you all the glory of heaven. It's at your disposal. Hallelujah. 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 Father wants to speak to you tonight. Father wants to talk to you tonight. Father wants to impart things to you tonight. But if you're not listening, he can't. Hallelujah, Jesus. Broti ci scala, brosu cotone nene me me ma coche. Gente un po' barra se c'è di dia. Thank you for. Hallelujah. 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 Zibide de che de babushi, de babu di de babu su di de de babu. Ne te de de mamma chicata. Brosu te de de babu che mi na mamma sur la barra bande. Zite di dia, si de 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 che de che de le de 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 bronzo de de che de de barra scala. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, to baptize every person in this place with the fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. With the fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. You have to open your mouth. There's some people in this place, you're not opening your mouth. You have to open your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you for the fire of heaven. We thank you, Father, for the fire of heaven. We thank you, Father, for the glory of heaven. We thank you, Father, for rivers of living water. Live rivers of living water, Father. Feel that, feel that, feel that, feel that, feel that, feel that, feel that now. 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 Feel that. Feel that with the glory. Feel that. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Woo, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for the glory of heaven. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Is He worthy to you? Is He worthy of your praises? Is the Father worthy of your praises? Is the Lamb of God that took away your sins and washed you and redeemed you in His own blood, is He worthy enough for you to open your mouth and praise Him? Is He worthy enough for you to open your mouth, lose your life, and begin to praise Him and worship Him? Is He worthy to you? Worthy, oh worthy, is the Lamb of God. Worthy, oh your Father. Worthy are you, Lamb of God. Worthy, oh your Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So pray to the Lord of the Lord, so to the Lord of In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy, worthy are you, Lord Jesus. Worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. You know, I know, I know, I know this is the way out of the things that are holding you back. I know this is the answer that you've been waiting for. This is the answer to those questions you've been asking. These, this is the answer to those burdens you've allowed yourself to carry. This is the answer for you to be more effective in the kingdom of God. To open your mouth and praise Him. Now, it is very, it is very evident that some of you have been praising Him on a regular basis. But it's also very evident that some of you can't even open your mouth to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I think we're going to need to tarry just a little bit longer here. Because if you will just open your mouth and begin to praise Him and begin to worship Him, your answer will come. Your answer will come. Your answer will come. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father. I praise you, Father. I glorify your name, Almighty God. For there is none like you. Oh, Father, you are my deliverer. You are my healer. You are my way, way maker. We thank you, Father, for the fire of heaven. Father, we'll forget not. We'll forget not those wonderful things that you have done for us. We'll not forget. We'll not be forgetters. We'll not be forgetful. Hearers, oh God. Oh, Father, forgetful recipients. Oh, God, but we will. We will remember. 
those great things that you have done for us. Hallelujah. Woo! How you healed our bodies. How you saved our souls. How you baptized us. How you made us whole. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Glory to your name, Jesus. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You know, we must be a little bit more excited than the people in the world are about Black Friday. People that will go and camp out. My goodness, I heard them talking at the Thanksgiving table about people already camping out for a week to get some stupid deal. Save a few bucks. My son said they didn't do their math very well. They were going to save... $300 and camped out a whole week to save $300 they needed to get a better job or something. But we have to be more passionate about God. There can't be anything, any people upon the face of the earth that's more passionate than we are because there's nobody that's been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ except His church. Except His church. is the greatest gift the greatest gift that any man could ever receive and you know it don't go to sleep on it don't go to sleep on what he's done don't go to sleep on the glory and the realms of heaven live on the edge on fire in the fire passionate 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 about what he has done. Get excited about what he's done. You, you got enough to get excited about when you wake up in the morning and you're still breathing. That's a lot to be excited about. The blessings of God. The blessings of God if you'll look at the blessings and not look at the problems. But you'll look at the blessings and you'll count the blessings and you'll begin to thank him for what he has done. Be thankful in everything. Even the tribulations because you can say, oh, Father, I know, I know that you are working something good in me out of all of this. Father, I know that you are bringing forth a vessel tried in the fire. And you're bringing forth a vessel of pure gold. Fit, fit, fit for your use, Lord. I know that's what you're doing, Father. So I'm thankful right inside the midst of the tribulation. I'm not going to let the trial or the tribulation get me down. Because it can affect, it can affect my body. It can affect my mind. But it can't change my heart about Jesus. It can't change what Jesus has done for me. It can't change, change the realms of glory that I will live in for eternity, forever and ever. They can kill the body. They can beat the body. We don't even get that far. There isn't anybody here that's suffered under blood yet. Nobody that's got stoned for preaching the gospel yet. And I'm saying yet, because we are stirring some things up. And somebody might get something thrown at them eventually. Well, hallelujah. But we'll count it all joy. Because the things that are good done against us, the Lord teaches us to walk it out faithfully before him. He's got it all laid out for us to count it all joy, to bless when, those, when people curse us, to render a blessing, not another curse back but to render a blessing and to be thankful in the situations that we're in. Knowing our Father is working. He's working on the inside of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, what's bad 
It's when we're all upset about the mess we got ourselves in. Because we weren't listening. You know, and that's where, that's where most of the Christians' trials and tribulations come from. Just living out this life, doing what we think we need to do. You know, coming to church, being a good church come, goer or whatever. Being faithful to the house of God. But about our own business. And finding ourselves in a mess. Because we get in... We get our eyes off of Jesus, actually. You may not realize that, but your eyes are off Jesus. When we get in the I want and what I need and what's going to satisfy us in this life and more, 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 more. When Jesus just simply said, come and follow me. Come and follow me. Come and follow me. Just come and follow me. I'll take care of everything you need. If you do it the way I want you to do it, if you'll just come and follow me, I'll take care of your needs. But we get our hands on the steering wheel of life and we grip that steering wheel so tightly with, we've got to work it out. We've got to fix it. We've got to figure out how we're going to pay for the car note, pay for the house note, have clothes to keep up with everybody else, whatever. Jesus said, forsake those things, come and follow me, seek first the kingdom of heaven and my righteousness, his righteousness, and all. He didn't say he'd leave any of them out. He said all these things shall be added unto you. He'll take care of you. He spends a lot of time talking about the lily of the field and how it's here today and gone tomorrow, but yet is arrayed. It is arrayed all in Solomon's glory. Who provided that glory for Solomon? The Father provided it. Who provides that glory for the lily? Ha! <laughs> that lily just has to trust God's going to take care of it because it can't go get a job <laughs> to take care of it. That lily can't do anything to produce that beauty. Neither can you. Jesus said, I come to do your will, oh God. Your will, oh God. Not my will. Not my way. Not my plan. But I come to do your will, oh God. You look at the, you look at the unity between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You look at that unity. The Father willed the creation. Jesus, the Word, spoke it out. And the Holy Spirit began to brood upon the waters. He began to move and He began to perform the work. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Oh. Father willed it. And Jesus said, here I am. He spoke it. He surrendered himself and the Holy Spirit came and he performs it. He performed it. He performs it and he'll perform it in you and for you. He'll do the work. It's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Father. Father, we thank you that you have called us. You have called us to be in you. <laughs> As Jesus is in the Father and the Father is in the Son. Just like the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit work together just in that unity. When one begins to will, the other begins to speak and the next one begins to perform. And we say, here we are. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, perform it in me. I'll go where you send me. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll be what you want me to be. I'll be a nation shaker. I'll be a history maker for you, Lord. I give my life to you. I surrender it to you. It's not mine. It's not mine. Father says, let go of your life. Oh, this is an important call. Well, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, this is going to be a really good message. <laughs> I cannot wait to get that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is about the building. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we praise you. We glorify your name. We thank you, Father, for the purpose and the plan that you have for us in San Diego. We're not going to sit back on our little bottoms any longer, but we're going to see the glory of God revealed in San Diego. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get done with being tired. Break off the spirit of tiredness. It's amazing on Sunday morning how many people are tired. It's amazing on Wednesday night how many people, man, that thing hits them. Oh, tonight, man, I'm really exhausted and I've got this and I've got that and I've got the other. But I tell you what, we're shaking this thing up. We're shaking this thing up. It ain't staying like this any longer. We're shaking this thing up. We're taking San Diego for Jesus Christ. Now you get ready. You just get ready. You get ready because we ain't going to let anybody sit back in the corner. There ain't anybody going to sit back any longer. There's nobody. There's nobody that's going to stay in, in the back room hiding out just doing the work. We're going we're gonna to take turns with you. You can, t- you can have a chance to clean the bathrooms and go back in the back room and do a few things, but we're going to pull you out and put you on, for, uh, uh, on the spotlight. Hallelujah. We're going to make a, 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 an earth-shaking, history-making, God-fearing, loving saint out of you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. His will, His will done in us, just like Jesus said, I do nothing, I do nothing except I hear the Father. And I see the Father. I don't do anything unless I see the Father do it. I don't say anything. I like you guys standing up better. I don't care if you, no, you can sit down, but I don't care if you're doing jumping jacks. Oh boy, it gets me excited though when you want to stand up. Hallelujah. I don't care if you're doing jumping jacks running around the building. Just don't fall asleep. Just don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep on Jesus. Don't fall asleep. Oh, come on. You can be more valiant than to be tired. You can be more valiant than that. You can do more than that. Now, okay, Brother Yoon fell asleep when they were beating him. He would fall asleep when they began to beat him, and he would wake up when it was all over. And so, if you can get an anointing to sleep under that, that's good. But don't get anointing. There is not an anointing to sleep when the Father's speaking. When the Father's speaking, there's an anointing to shake yourself. To shake yourself and to say, Father is speaking to me right now. Father is saying something to me. Father wants to change me. Father wants to take me over into the realms of his presence and to the realms of his glory. He wants to set me up on high with him for all eternity. He's called me into this place of fellowship and relationship. He wants me. He's called me. He separated me to be a laborer with Jesus Christ. A co-laborer. A co-laborer, the scripture says. Co-laborer with Jesus Christ. You can't get any higher than that. You don't have to wait someday to be crowned because you're already co-labor with Jesus Christ the righteous. That is the greatest, the greatest thing that could be bestowed upon you, the greatest honor that could be bestowed upon you upon this earth as to be called out from sin and darkness and from this, the things of this world, the misery the powers of darkness, and to be an heir and joint heir with Jesus Christ and co-labor in the kingdom of heaven with him. That is the greatest honor. Now, come on, people. Let's co-labor together with Jesus Christ. Come on, people. Let's look at what he's done for us. Let's get excited about it. Let's live it. Let's walk it out everywhere we go, in everything we do. You know, you heard my ringer. My Savior lives. My Savior loves. My Savior lives. Man, it's awesome. You know, the bank's so quiet. I got this thing blasting. You know, the places are so quiet. And people get still. They freeze. It goes off. And I take it out of my purse real slowly. I'm like, I can't find it. I mean, it's blasting. And I take it out of my purse real slowly. My Savior lives. Oh, let's see. Do I want to take that call? Just blasting. Because, I mean, you know, I, get, I may not get to talk to every person in that place. But they're going to know that my Savior lives. 
They're going to know about it. I was looking today for a better one that you know, screamed, Jesus, Jim, living Savior. I found these free Christian ringtones, and I'm changing them around so I can, I can blast the gospel in everything in my life, in everything. I'm not going to hide out under some rock and let the rock get up and praise him for me. And you don't want to hide out any longer. There's, a, you know, most, most, most everybody here tonight, you're wanting to press in. But too many of you are hiding out. Too many is one. But there's more than one that's hiding out. There's more than one that is living your own life. Because you got yourself in a mess. Financially, maybe. And so you got to take care of what you've done. I tell you what, there's a way out of that, too. Say, Father, forgive me. Deliver me. Work it out. And stop what you're doing to get yourself there. <laughs> Move outside of that. And get your focus, get your eyes on the kingdom of heaven and his purposes and his plans for you. Seek first his kingdom. Get your eyes there. Say, Father, what are you wanting me to do? Yes, Lord, I can see where I'm not like I was last year. But this year, I don't want to be like I was this past year. I want to go to a deeper place. I want the anointing to increase in my life. I want to do more in the kingdom than I've done. Father, I want to be a greater witness. I want to be that light, that, that light that you've called us be, a light that is set upon a hill that cannot be hid. I don't want to be hiding under the bushel. I definitely don't want to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, and the people, like I was talking about my phone, the people in the store, the ones that, I, that freeze, I can tell, I'm like, that's Christians. They go to church. The ones that freeze, the other ones just keep moving. But people freeze. I mean, they just get frozen. It's funny. Everywhere, I mean, seriously, everywhere I go, it's really fun. I, I really love this because it's so loud and everybody around can hear it. And, and I notice that all, these, all of a sudden these certain people will freeze. And I'm like, eh, they're the one, they go to church. And they're like, I can't believe that this is happening. Can anybody see me? I'm not with her. <laughs> Because people are ashamed of the gospel. The enemies talk them into be ash uh, being ashamed of the gospel. They won't confess. They won't say. They don't even realize that they're ashamed of the gospel. They're ashamed of the gospel. We don't want to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's power. It's power to change the lives of people around us. And if the enemy can deceive us, can deceive supposedly God's people in to being ashamed of the gospel, then the power cannot be given because it won't be spoken out of a person's mouth that's ashamed. And I will tell you this, that if you're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of you upon that day. He'll be ashamed of you if you're ashamed of him. You better find a way to be making sure you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ in any way and that you're not an appro a reproach to the gospel of Jesus Christ in any way. That's just as much a responsibility as not being ashamed. God has called us not to be a reproach to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I tell you what, the sinners, the sinners know when you're sinning and what you're doing. They're watching you. You talk to somebody about the gospel of Jesus Christ, they're watching. They, begin, they, they immediately begin to watch how you respond and what you do and how you act. Do you look like Jesus? Are you acting like Jesus? Do you, because, I mean, it's amazing how they could know him, but the church has allowed themselves to be so deceived. So many, so many people in the church, really, if they made the confession that, they, that is really true, they would say, I've come to do my will, O oh Lord. And where you fit in, I'll work it out in my schedule somehow because I'm busy. Oh, I love you, Jesus, and I thank you for saving me. But I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. And that is, um, sadly, sadly, the state of so much of the church. He's called us to be just like Jesus to lay down our lives and live 
unto him, live unto the gospel. And it's glorious. And the whole fact of the matter is, is the people that are under that deception, that have fallen asleep in the church under that deception, <clears throat> are missing out on the realms of glory, on the realms of heaven, on the true riches. And if you stay in that deception, the deception will grow deeper. Any deception you allow, if you allow the deception of complaining, it will continue to grow. If you allow the deception of worry, it will continue to grow. If you allow the deception of strife, these are sins. These are, this is ungodly. It will just get bigger and it will keep you out of heaven. He, the scripture says, let him that names the name of Christ depart, depart from iniquity. It says in 1 John chapter 2, if you say that you're in Jesus Christ, then you're to walk even as he walked. And what was he? He was the lamb of God without spot or without, and without blemish. He washed us and he cleansed us from all of our sins. He set us up in the realms of heaven and he enabled us by breaking every power of darkness. He came and he destroyed. He came and destroyed the works of darkness. He destroyed the power of sin. He destroyed it. And when you came to him and you were washed and you were cleansed in the blood of the lamb, he gave you all power and authority to stand against every lie of the enemy. He gave you all power and authority to depart from iniquity. He gave you all power and authority to eschew evil, to go the opposite direction, to run from it, to close your eyes and go the opposite direction and not have any part of it. He gave you that power to choose. He set you free to choose to live with him. He didn't take away your will when he washed you and cleansed you in his blood. He didn't take away uh, your ability to make a choice. He didn't even take away your mind so you couldn't process things in your head anymore. He left it all right there. And he gives you a choice every moment of every day. Are you going to follow him by the Holy Ghost that he poured out upon us? Are you going to follow him in all the power and the glory of heaven? Are you going to choose to open your mouth and begin to worship him in the trial and tribulation? Are you going to choose to be thankful? Are you going to choose not to backbite and allow strife in your life? Are you going to choose to lay down your life every moment? Are you going to choose to love your enemies? Are you going to choose to... I mean, just don't even think about your enemies. You're going to choose to love your friends. You know, sometimes I wonder, sometimes I wonder if people ever have really a true friend or family member that they don't talk about some way. Bless their darling little heart. You know, in Texas, you can say anything, you, you know, everybody's, it's Bible Belt, and everybody goes to church somewhere, and everybody's a Christian. They couldn't prove they were a Christian. They would not be found guilty of being a Christian. But if you say, bless your little darling heart, when, their little darling heart, when you're talking about them, it's okay. You're, you know, you can slide through with that one to heaven. I mean, the doctrine that people will come up with on their own. But really, really, we should be the defender of all. Every time. Every time we should, ha we should have words of defense and words of love or words of rebuke instead of words of listening. <laughs> and, can, and adding to it. When somebody has something to say about somebody, that somebody should be in your presence. And if that somebody isn't there, then shut up. Because you're in danger. You're in danger. You're endangering yourself to being cast into an eternal lake of fire. Because it's evil, it's sin. God does not have any favorites as far as preferring one above another. He loves everyone. He loves 
his children. He has a scripture very imperative for us to look at. Touch not my anointed. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Have you received the anointing? Has he poured his Holy Spirit out on you? Then you are his anointed. You may not be a prophet yet, but if you keep praying in the Holy Ghost, you'll, you'll, it'll start coming out of you like a river. If you just open your mouth and begin to pray, he'll take you right out of your shy, introvert, quiet self. And he will open your mouth with the words of heaven. And you will begin to speak out of that river, out of your belly. It will flow if you just stay hooked up in the realms of glory instead of the realms of the satanic. And, you know, let's just make it clear. It's satanic. We don't want anybody here in this place to think they're going to heaven when they're on their way to hell. Let him that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let's walk even like Jesus walked. Not one spot. Once we come into this redemptive salvation, we from that point never have to have another spot again. Okay, so... Everybody in this place goes, Eek, I've got some spots. And we're, when uh, in 1 John chapter 2, when it says, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. We all ra- erased if and we put when instead of if. I mean, the Lord was making a way out. He wasn't making it a life to live. He was showing forth his mercy. You know, it's just a few verses down that it says in the same chapter to be just like Jesus, to walk even like he walked. Just a few verses down. But everybody erased it and put in when. And then they continue in their sin. What does the scripture say about that? God forbid! Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Yes, it is the dispensation of grace. Yes! It is the dispensation of his goodness and his mercy that is poured out upon us. But he has called us into this realm of heaven and glory with him. And so from this day forward, now now that the truth is being imparted to you in a deeper way, now that the Holy Spirit is opening up your heart that you can hear what the word of God says, and if you need a list of scriptures, you know, we'll make sure you have them. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't even touch a a percentage of any form, a fraction of a percentage of the scriptures that talks on this. We'll make sure you have them, but today is the, right now, right now is the first moment of the rest of your life. Now you can be free because the, the truth sets you free. The word of God comes forth and it's imparted in us and it sets us free. What he has done is come to set us free. To liberate us. So now choose. You choose. It's your choice. It's your choice to not allow it to play around in the mind. It's your choice to not allow it to come out of your mouth. It's your choice. You know, I, I counsel a lot of people. And, they're, you know, people have had a lot of horrible things happen to them in their life. Horrible things. And the things that, you know, some people come and complain about and they're all distraught about. I think, you know, as they're saying them, I'm sorry, but I think about these horrible atrocities that's happened to other people when they're sitting there talking about their their little minute problems. And I know it's big to them, but everybody's got things that come against them to try to bring hurt and to hold you captive in a bottle of hurt and pain and misery. But it's your choice what you're going to do with it. Everybody thinks their hurts are worse than anyone else's. And so many people stay captive their whole life because somebody hurt them. Because everybody else in the room got a bag of potato chips, but they didn't get one. I mean, you know, I know people that are hurt because they didn't feel like they got enough food. Literally. They didn't get to have all they wanted to eat, they thought. You know, I just, like, Lord Jesus. You know, and then I, I know of other people that were tied up and, and beaten by their stepfather and all kinds of other atrocities happened to them. And it's a choice that each person makes. 
that you're not going to stay captive to the enemy. That Jesus came to take all of that pain, all that sorrow, all that sadness away. Remove it from you. Don't go back and pick that backpack up and put it back on and carry it around. Leave it. Leave it at the cross. Come unto him. Come unto him, all ye that are heavy laden, and he will give you rest from that stuff. Leave it at the cross. The problem is that you keep going back to the cross and you keep picking it up. And you keep taking it back upon yourself. Unforgiveness. Not being able to forgive person, people for what they do. It's the same as hurt. You know, and hurt and unforgiveness. Those are, I think they're, it's probably two of the biggest things. Because hate and unforgiveness, you know, hurt, unforgiveness, turns into bitterness, turns into hatred. It's murder. It causes murder. It causes people to be murderers. Well, you know, just talking about somebody, that's a spiritual cannibal. The Bible says, be careful that you don't bite and devour one another. So bite, you know, you bite a hamburger and then you swallow it and it's devoured. So that's cannibal, right? right? If it's human flesh and when you speak evil, are you talk about somebody? You are a spiritual cannibal. And we think cannibals are just like horrible. I mean, you know, Mark talks about them looking at your elbow with a different desire. And we're just all like, you know, to even process the thought of cannibalism is like too much. But yet, when you open your mouth and you speak evil, and evil is talking about not lifting them up, but degrading them in any way, even if you talk about you didn't like their ugly scarf, you know, whatever, you just keep your mouth shut. Speak a blessing. Train yourself. To have something good to say or say, as Thumper says on Bambi, don't say anything at all. <laughs> if you can't say something nice, I mean, the scripture got into the Bambi movie. <laughs> don't say anything at all. You know, and this is very imperative because I tell you what, if we took the show of hands of how many people have not said anything derogatory about anyone in the last week, there's very few that could raise their hands and say, I have not. And you know what? The Holy Spirit knows right where to target you. And he's here tonight. And he's targeting us. And he's, he's saying, I want you to love even as I have loved you. I want you to love that way. Not your neighbor as yourself, but your neighbor as I did. I laid down my life for you. I laid down my life. Don't you appreciate that Jesus laid down his life for you? Yeah. He's called us to do the same Amen. thing, to lay down our life. Yeah. And even when people persecute us and they do all kinds of things against us, that we render a blessing and we bless them. Amen. Man, it's just, it's shocking to the world. It changes them. Mm -hmm. It's shocking to the church. Because mm -hmm. the church is used to, you know, used to giving each other black eyes. Sad but true. But not any longer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not any longer. The truth is setting people free tonight. Amen. The truth is setting you free. Hallelujah. As you receive the truth, as you allow the word of God to go into you, and you receive the truth, it sets you free. Now don't go back to the cross and pick up that backpack. Make the decision. Make the decision that you're never going to do it again. You know, I... I heard the testimony of, of, an, of a person that um, they had a, a very high-strung nature and they were always causing trouble everywhere they went. You know, just not, um, not serious trouble, but they always had some kind of ruckus going on. You know, just that type of person. Anybody ever meet anybody that's always got to have blah, 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 you know, and just high-strung and got to know what everybody's doing and then try to get into everybody's business and fix it and just always making a mess. <clears throat> and this person I knew for quite a while, and when they told me they were like that, I absolutely could not believe it. I'm like, you were like that? And that person said to me, he said, yes, I was. And one day the Holy Spirit came and convicted me of the way I acted. And I took that action and I walked it up to the altar and I laid it down that day, and I never picked it up again. 
And I thought, no, you didn't. Because I've known you for a long time and I've known you very well. And I never would have believed you ever acted like that. That choice, that day, already a Christian, but allowing that kind of thing to go on in their life. But heard the truth one day and said, chose. And that is the thing that you have to realize you're choosing every moment of your eternity. You're choosing. And we want to look back and we want to think, well done. Because we want to stand before him and him say, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. The Lord does not find deceit in us. He doesn't find people that lie in their hearts, that hide things, that have their mental playground of secrets that don't belong in the kingdom of heaven. We want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You were obedient, obedience, obedience, obedience. When he speaks to us, we obey. We do not procrastinate. But we obey. We just do. We want to be doers of the word and not hearers only. You know, he, he, he endued us with power. Jesus said to the disciple, disciples, he said... I give you power to tread upon all serpents. He he gave them power to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out devils. He gave them power and authority over everything. And then he sent them out two by two. And he sent out the 70 others. And he says, when you go, don't take a purse or a script or an extra coat. Don't take any money Money is mentioned. Don't take any money. Take no money. No money. Don't prepare for yourself. I want you to step out in faith. I told you to go. Where did he tell you to go? He told us to go. He sent the disciples first to the lost sheep of Israel. He said, don't go in to the other cities around. Go to your neighborhood. Go. And preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. And don't provide for yourself. And don't look and expect any kind of finances from anywhere. But he said the workman's worthy of his hire. And that he would take care of us. So many people are waiting for that bank account for them to make enough money to be able to do something, to go. They have this, they have this vision of someday, somewhere, over the rainbow. Then, once everything's put together and it's all fixed, then I can go. Well, I've believe, been believing God that he would give me the finances to go and, and, and to do this or to, to, you know, I've got this vision, but I've got to have the finances for it. And 20 years later, they're still waiting on the finances. If you would just look into the word of God, the word of God said, step out in faith and do it. If he's put the vision in your heart, of course, we have the company of the church around us to verify what we feel like God's calling us to do. And that is a place of safety and protection, and we're so thankful for it. Because, hey, man, there's many times that I thought that I should maybe do something And uh, I was wrong. You know, I missed it. I missed it in God. I got excited. Well, it's good to be excited. But it's good to have the company of the church around you at the same time. You know, so we don't just come up with the big, bright ideas. Because the will of man can so deceive itself. That deep desire inside of man can so bring itself into deception because of your will. Keeping that will surrendered to the Holy Spirit can be very challenging for all of us. It's a strong thing God gave us, a will. You know why he gave us such a strong will? Because he wants us to spend every dime of it on him. He wants us to give it all to him, every bit of it. Because he receives that. He receives that. 
as such a great and precious incense and worship and praise and adoration of our love for him. But it's very challenging, and that's why we've got the company of the saints. And even in the ministry, even in the ministry, your will can overcome. And I'm thinking in, in Galatians where, where um, Paul, you know, he's got the ministry to the Gentiles. Father opened the door for him to minister to the Gentiles. Here, the Jew, Jews, you know, the, the guy that was so zealous, he was killing Christians and just leading the, the attack on the church because he was so zealous in the Jewish religion, here he is, minister to the Gentiles. And he comes back in Galatians chapter 2, and he finds Peter. Now, we're looking at Peter. Let's see, Peter was with Jesus, and he had the revelation when Jesus said, um, when Jesus said, whom do you say that I am? Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus speaks back to him and says, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. This is spirit revelation. You know, he's excited, you know, because Peter, the zealous one, is grabbing a hold of this. And he's hearing by the spirit. Well, just a few verses down, he told Peter, get behind me, Satan, (laughs) for you are an offense unto me because he wasn't hearing... From the right side, I thought I'd turn the volume down. Thank you. Okay, when it goes off, turn the volume down, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. Praise you, Jesus. But anyway, so Paul, here he is. He comes in and he, and he, sees, he sees Peter withdraw himself from the Gentiles to please the Jews because he was afraid of the Jews and what they would think about it because a Jew was not to go into a Gentile's house because then they became unclean. And Peter was, his, his ministry was to the Jews. And he had to keep that reputation going good. But it was causing a bunch of dissimulation. Even Barnabas, Barnabas that came back with Paul and had been ministering with Paul, he got caught up in the dissimulation. And it was a bunch of confusion among the Jews and the Gentiles, and it was causing a whole huge problem. And so Paul come, and he rebuked Peter to the face before them all because he was to be blamed. And so before the whole church and all the apostles, he rebukes, he rebukes Peter. Now, where was Peter at the time that he's getting, that Peter, I mean, where is Paul at the time that Peter's getting the revelation that Jesus is the Christ? Where was Paul when Peter was walking with Jesus on earth every day for three, three years, eating with him, fellowshipping with him? Where was Paul? Paul was fighting against it. Where was Paul when Peter carrying such an anointing of the presence of heaven that even his shadow was healing the people? around him. Where, where was Paul then? And now here stands this, this, this guy born out of due season rebuking Peter to the face before the whole church, straightening out the mess. How did Peter get in this situation? You know, a man that walked in such power and authority, such glory of heaven, and he still was walking in, in, in that But yet, he was, in his way, trying to be all things to all men. Like Paul said he was, all things to all men. But wasn't balancing it correctly, so correction needed to come. The safety of the church. And we, of course, fine. You know, Paul, at this point, he's zealous to the truth. He said, I found that they were not walking in the truth, and so I dealt with it. I dealt with the fact that they weren't walking in the truth. And we know Peter... He walked humbly before God, and there was a total change. We don't hear of an uproar. We don't hear of, of Peter getting upset. We just, we just hear the correction. It's done. It's over with. The safety of the church, submitting to those that are over you, for they watch for your soul. That's in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Submit to them. Listen to them. Come under that protection. Be in that protection. There's protection even if you're older than the person that's younger, if they're flowing in the Holy Ghost, they're, they're valiant for the truth and they're speaking the word of God. You want to listen to them. You want to take a step back and you want to listen. And you want to be humble. We don't want to, we don't want to think of ourselves more than we are. Amen. But we want to walk in lowliness of mind and humility before God because there's not one of us that are above. 
There's not one of us that are above getting on the wrong revelation. That's why the company of the saints is so imperative. But if you won't stay in that company, if you run from it, so many people want to divorce this church because now they've decided they've outgrown it or, you know, or that church or the other church or whatever. Uh, you know, and, and there's such a strong spirit of divorce in the world anyway. It's divorcing one another. It's husbands and wives divorcing one another. It's the spiritual atmosphere of the world. And so Christians join in and they don't like what their husband's doing or their, their wife's doing and so they divorce them. And, and that's, you know, Jesus told, told them, says, look, that was because of the hardness of your hearts. You know, I've called you to love. I've called you to lay down your life and love that obnoxious thing. You know, because, I mean, there's some, there's some people that are married to people that are not saved, and their, their spouse is absolutely evil and obnoxious. And, and there is scriptures for releasing a saint on that. If, if the unbelieving does not want to stay with the believing and departs, then you can release it and let it go. And then you're not, you're not held to that. But, I mean, there's scripture for everything. You know, and when I begin, when I begin to get revelation, what I take, what I do with that revelation that Father gives me is I take it right to the Word of God and I begin to run it through the Word of God and check it. And I have those that are over me in the Lord that I check myself with. You know, because I get, I get ideas sometimes about how I should deal with things. And I just want to make sure I'm doing it right. You know, because... I'll feel the anointing. But you know, the enemy, he, he can appear. He can appear as an angel of light. And he's been doing this a long time. A very long time. And he knows his craft. And so he'll breathe in these deceiving things. But you don't want to be a part of just being a loose cannon out there on your own, doing your own thing, and, and really never coming under that, that, that relationship and that body that body that protects you and keeps you because you divorce and go from place to place to place. Don't allow the spirit of divorce in any way in your life. Don't allow it. Stay under that covenant and that protection. And know God's placed you where he's placed you. And he's going to grow you up where you're at. And you can grow anywhere if you've got the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 You don't have to be one of those that runs from their problems, runs from the situation. And that's all it is. That's all it is when you, you're thinking about uh, getting somewhere else and maybe God has another ministry for you and, and, and you just need to leave and go somewhere else in the same town. That, um, that is called running. That's not being called sent out. There's a right way to do things. There's a right way to do things. That's divorcing and running. And the right, thing to do, the right way to do is just get so full of the Holy Ghost Get so full of surrender, submission, and humility before God. So full of the anointing. So equipped with the power and the authority of Jesus Christ that the pastor has to send you out because you've got a calling to go fulfill. And you go in the glory of heaven and being sent out from the church but never departing from the church. Always coming back as part of. Always connected. You want to be connected. We're connected. This church is connected to so many ministries around the world. We're not an island to ourselves. Over here floating out, figuring it out our own way. But we, ha we're, we submit to those other ministries. And we have that fellowship and that connection to keep us together. Running together in the things of the kingdom. So no, de no deception can overtake us. Because realizing... That the enemy knows his business. And we've got to be kept in a place of safety. And a place of safety is always humility. Always humility. Never being determined that my way is right. I know God spoke to me. You know, and I know people like that. God spoke to me and nobody's going to talk me out of it. And there'll be one person after another person say, no, the word of God says this, 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 this. This cannot be. You cannot do this. The, here's, here's the word of God here. It shows right here in the word of God. And yet, nope, God spoke to me. I heard him. I know his voice. And you can't tell me. Well, look, I'm not infallible. You're not infallible. You are not God. And so you want to know that it lines up with the word of God and the 
the people that are over you and the company of saints agree with the revelation that you have. You want to know that. That's a place of safety. But anyway, I want to turn to Matthew. I mentioned about Peter getting rebuked. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the glory of heaven. Father, we just thank you that you bring change in our life. And, Father, that we're never the same. Father, that we press in. Father, that we stay desperately hungry for you all night long. I tell you, the glory of heaven in, in your bedroom at night, by yourself in the, in the stillness and the quietness, try to get to bed earlier. Don't, don't, you know, don't try to um, get in the next movie or this or that at night. Try to get in bed in time. You know, I always told my children, I'm like, we had our Bible reading and prayer we had something going on four times a day because Deuteronomy says four times a day to teach your children. When you wake up, when you go to bed, when you're walking along the wayside, when you're sitting down. And so we always had something, and James could testify of it because, you know, he lived with my boys for a while, and he says every night without fail. I remember him telling me one time, every night without fail, they open the word no matter how late it is, after church at night, they opened the word because I told them, I said, look, we're having fellowship with God together, but you must have your own relationship with God. You must. And so you have got to open the word in the morning and open the word at night. You've got to take that moment to pray before you go to sleep. And you've got to take that moment to pray when you get up in the morning. And you don't just go on your own ability. You need this. You live by this. And, you know, they faithfully, they went to their rooms and they did this. But I tell you, this is the the nighttime is such a wonderful time to have fellowship. Don't get upset if you wake up in the middle of the night. Just say, yes, Father, here I am. You know, be like Samuel. Here I am. Speak, Lord. Your servant hears. And just begin to have fellowship. I, I rapture over into the glory in the middle of the night more than any place on earth. Just get caught up in the realms of glory. And when I start crying, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to go back to sleep for a while, but it's okay because the realms of heaven touches me so much I can't help it, but the, t- you know, the tears begin to run down my eyes because my sweet Jesus, my Lord and my Savior, oh, he's right there. He's touching me with the realms of his glory. I don't have to go to church and get in the prayer line. I have my relationship with Jesus right here at 3 o'clock in the morning. You know, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing, you know, I I want is the realms of glory. And it's so awesome to wake up out of a dream and you're somewhere preaching the gospel. I was ministering to Chinese people, children the other morning when I woke up. And, you know, it's just one thing after another. I think of, uh, uh, you know, it's always, you know, something that there's a dream of fellowship with the Father. It's glorious. But you have to separate your time, yourself for that. You have to prepare yourself. You have to prepare yourself to come into the house of the Lord. We begin to pay, prepare ourselves on Wednesday nights to come into the house of the Lord on Sunday morning. Prepare ourselves on Saturday nights to prepare ourselves to come into the house of the Lord on Sunday morning. I finally got that cleared up and said. <laughs> but anyway, so Sunday night, uh, Saturday night at 7 o'clock we shut down. You know, people like to invite you to a party on Saturday night. To do something on Saturday night. And I'm like, no. I tell my children, I raise them, no. We're not going to church on Sunday morning, deadbeat, tired, looking like here the chain gang come dragging in because we're worn out because we went and did our own thing. We're going to come into the house of God and lift up the name of Jesus and push the thing forward because this is what we live for. We living for a church that is alive and living without spot or wrinkle, ready for Jesus to come at every moment. Every moment ready to give an account of the hope of the calling, which is in us, to be able to speak forth the glory of heaven, for it to flow out of us like a river every moment of our life. And many days, you know, we fasted, I would fast on uh, Wednesdays for the the service on Sunday, on Wednesday night. And my kids, I homeschooled them and I would, you know, we'd get caught up because we, we went to the word first. After we had our own private word, you know, in our rooms by ourselves, we gathered up and the first thing we did is we went to the word in the morning. 
And we'd get lost in the realms of the Word so many times that our whole day would be just spent in, in the Word and in prayer. And we'd just get, I, I had revival with my children all the time, just lost in the realms of His presence. And school many times was the Word. And I tell you what, they did well when they got into college. They, you know, straight A's. They had no problems in college because if you have this, this is the anointing, this is power, this is authority, this is you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, this right here. And so I'd fast for the service on Wednesday night. So they'd end up fasting with me. I'd tell them, no, 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 you guys are little. You don't have to fast with me. You're too young. To... Oh, no, Mom. No, we want to fast too. And I tell you what, the glory of heaven would come down and, and the presence of God would be so captivating to them. They had t- would touch the realms of glory. Other people could be standing by, bored, looking at the clock, wait, you know, the watch, waiting to get out of church. But my kids would be caught up and raptured in the glory of heaven. And all the way home they would be, and we lived an hour away, and all the way home, they'd be talking about how they sensed and felt the power and the presence of God because I taught them to prepare themselves to be in the realms of glory and touch the realms of glory and come to revelation of the power and the presence of God. We don't want religion. We don't want to be taking our time card and sticking it in the little thing and go, click, click, I made it. God, you saw that. I was there. One for me. It's not what it's about. It's it's coming here together in unity to be changed, to be changed, to go deeper, to know him, to behold him, to, to get tattooed on the heart with the glory. To you're never the same. That kind of glory. Every time you come together, filled up. And, and I tell you what, when Jesus touches you, it's not some little old bitty touch. And it's according to how hungry you are. It's not the anointing whether the pastor has the anointing or not. It's according to how hungry you are. Because Jesus went into Nazareth, and he was full of all of heaven. And he couldn't do very much in Nazareth. Because of why? Their unbelief. And so many people sit in the church like a dead piece of wood waiting for the preacher to come over there and have something to bring life to the statue that's like, yeah, I didn't figure it out anyway. You know, I, I hear all this stuff about God you know, touching people and feeling like electricity going through their body, but it never happened to me. Well, you weren't hungry. You just weren't hungry. You just weren't desperate. You just weren't preparing yourself to get touched. By him. So he could equip you with the glory and take you outside of yourself and make you what you're not. Empower you, equip you, and make you a witness. That's where it's at. If you don't get touched in church, it's your fault. Because you are not hungry. You are not desperate. As I was praying earlier, that widow... That woman with the issue, not the widow, but the woman with the issue of blood. She had nowhere else to turn. She was absolutely desperate. And when your body is weak and it's drained, you take half your blood out of you and you see how good you feel. (laughs) Take half your blood out, see how good you feel, and live like that for a long time and have all these doctors practicing on you. Because they're practicing because they don't know yet. They're working on it. They think they know until they find out they don't know. And when they find out they don't know, then they'll practice something else that they think that they know, that they don't know. The Word of God knows. The Word of God has got the answer every time and is right. We just don't listen to it. But you look at that woman that had suffered so much. And she knew, she knew, she knew the the anointing and the glory was coming from Jesus. Tonight, the anointing and the glory is coming from Jesus. It is here. It's how hungry you are. It's how desperate you are to touch him. Are you going to touch him? Are you going to leave here with your problem? 
She pressed in. That crowd did not faze her. She got that strength somewhere. And she pushed through that crowd and she grabbed a hold of Jesus. <laughs> and she grabbed a hold of him with so much faith and so much belief that Jesus felt that anointing go out of his body. <laughs> I tell you what, you touch Jesus. You touch Jesus that desperate. And God will meet your needs. You will stand in the gap. You will be a repairer of the breach. You will have your children for Jesus. And the enemy has to get his hands off of them. In the name of Jesus, we bind the powers of darkness and the lies of the enemy. We bind the spirit of itch witchcraft that has come against your child. In Jesus' name, we break that yoke right now. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. When we stand in authority and power of the Holy Ghost, the enemy cannot touch us. The Lord encamps around about. The angels of the Lord encamp about, around about those who fear him. And he is ready to answer when we call upon him. He hears the prayers of the righteous. His ears are open unto the prayers of the righteous, but his ears are stopped. When there's iniquity and sin, he will not hear. So if your prayers aren't getting answered, maybe, maybe you need to do some repentance or maybe you just need to be pressing in and being a little bit more desperately hungry and not complacent because complacency and the lack of, of pressing in is kind of considered basically, let me not be too hard but lukewarm. Get up and be tenacious. Get up and take up your authority that God's given you. Quit sitting around and letting the enemy knock you around. My grandkids got sick here recently, and I went after praying for them. You do not get sick in Jesus' name. You have power and authority over this. Sickness has no place in our bodies. You know, and I, I, I've taught them this since they were very little. And, you know, they would... I, I need Nani, I need Nani, I need Nani. I feel like I'm going to throw up. Where's Nani? She's got to pray for me. You know, and little Josiah at three years old, he'd be like, I don't throw up in Jesus' name. I don't throw up in Jesus' name. And I mean, that's what we need to confess. People confess, oh, I've got a backache. No, my back is the healed of the Lord. I've got a this or that. And you know, it all comes through our confidence getting messed with that confidence and that boldness that we come before his throne room and we take possession of whatever we have need of because he answers whatever we ask. When our confidence gets messed with, then it's like the enemy just tries to begin to come and bombard you. I know I've experienced it. I know exactly what I'm saying. I've been through this one a, a few times. You know... But our confession must be what the Word of God is. And I, I'm continually telling people, don't confess that. Don't say that. Don't let that come out of your mouth. Show that back in. <laughs> Throw that out. Put it to the trash. Speak the Word of God. You do not have that. Somebody was speaking, their kid had some kind of mental syndrome. I said, are you going to hook up with the lie of the devil? Well, the doctor said. I don't care what the doctor said. The Word of God says. The Word of God says, if you will speak the Word of God and stop sitting around in the lie of the enemy, you will receive your miracle. You speak the truth. I don't care if you're throwing up and you have a fever. You say, I don't get sick in Jesus' name. I don't throw up in Jesus' name. I don't have a fever in Jesus' name. And you don't be removed. Little Jacob, man, he, he got sick. He went straight to his bedroom. And he started praying. He's in there. He's praying and praying and praying. This is just... Um, Wednesday, yeah, let's see. No, it was Saturday night, Saturday night. He started feeling bad. He's in his room, and he's just praying and praying and praying a little bit. Josiah goes in there, and Josiah begins to help him pray, and they're in there having revival, and they're praying. And they're like, we do not get sick in Jesus' name. We do not get sick. And they're praying, and Jacob's in there, and about an hour later, he's, you know, in there praying, interceding. He's eight years old, and he's praying. An hour later of praying, he's going... I feel good. I feel good. Oh, hallelujah, I feel good. He's in there writing his own song about how he feels good. And he's just standing in that confession. And he didn't feel good. And the next day, he had a miserable headache. 
his head was hurting him so so bad. And, and the people that had this, you know, they threw up and, you know, had the, all the rest of the stuff, and we don't need to mention all that because people will go, oh, that's what's going to happen to me. <laughs> and, and they'll say, oh, so, so what all happens and how does it go? And, okay, so that's what, how many days does it last? Okay, well, that's probably what i got to go through. Yeah, I, I mean, literally, that's what... <laughs> It's the truth, though. I've had people say, now, how, did it la- how long did it last when they got sick? I'm like, uh. <laughs> you can talk about faith all day, but just say one little thing like that, and then you got their attention. How long did it last? And I know I'm going to get it. It's about time for it to come. What was it? It's been 24 hours since I got near him, and I was, you know, contaminated. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, so he's sitting in church, and he's just praying. In Jesus' name, this headache goes. You know, he wasn't praying out loud, but he was like, he was, at this point, he was mad. He only, I don't know if you saw him up here crying. It looked like, you know, somebody upset him. But he was mad. He's like, I am not going to be sick. I'm not having this. And then he got healed, and he didn't have the whole cycle that everybody else had. But there was a pressing in, and I'm like, Lord, why does this little eight-year-old baby have to press in? Well, Father, I don't know, but I know that you're working you're working in him. And I am so excited about how instead of him going wah, wah, wah about the sickness, he was in his room just going after it in prayer and saying, I will not have this. I know the truth of the word of God. I've heard it and I'm going to participate with that in my life. And I'm not going to participate with what I see or what I feel or what I hear, but I'm going to participate with the word of God. If we will line ourselves up with the word of God then we will have what we ask. We will have what we say because we have the power to speak it out. He's given us all power and authority in his name. And whatever we ask. But if you continually have allowed these things in your life, your whole life, it's going to take some time of pressing in like little Jacob pressed in and refusing. And then if it comes out of you again, refusing it again. And I know I've been healed of so many things. I've been healed of things that they said you would never get healed of. And, you know, the first, the first word that I heard it come out of the doctor's mouth, because, you know, I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, you have this. And I said, no, I don't. And the doctor laughed. She goes, well, yes, because this is what showed up, and there's evidence that you have it. And I'm like, no, I do not. I go, you will see. And I went back, and I didn't have it. And I said, I told you, Jesus Christ is the healer. And I got to witness to that doctor. And she says, you are, this is supposed to be the rest of your life once you get this. You cannot get rid of this. And she had to stand back. And she says, now what did you do? I said, I prayed in Jesus' name. Because I don't have to have sickness, and I don't have to have disease. I, and I said, and I set up and I said, and I'm God's favorite child. And she goes, I believe you. <laughs> if we will live it out, walk it out, it doesn't say that we won't have these things come against us. But it says that <clears throat> he bore our sickness in his body. And by his stripes we were healed. And if we will line our confession up with the word of God and get tenacious and bold and take hold of it. Be valiant for the truth of the word. We'll have it. And we'll be that light for the gospel of Jesus Christ. The glory of God will be manifested. Sometimes it's a battle. And you just have to just press in and press in. You know, and every one of us has wavered in the battle. It's okay. This moment is the first moment of the rest of your life. Now take the word of God and change the world. You have power and authority to change the world because upon Jesus Christ, upon this rock, he'll build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. The gates of hell cannot prevail. Hallelujah. You don't have to be a scaredy cat and go run in the corner. You know, but it's like this. People have, you know, they have a spirit of fear and they're all scared and they want you to pray for them. And, you know, you get into the whole middle of the thing and what did you do? Well, I was watching a scary movie. (laughs) And it scared me and I got under the spirit of fear. And I'm like, you know, and so you pray for them, you get them delivered. 
and, and, you know, empower them in Jesus' name, and peace, and everything's okay. And then they come back in the prayer line, and they're, and they're under the spirit of fear again. Well, what'd you do? Well, I watched another scary movie. <laughs> and you're just like, the three stooges might help you. <laughs> you know? Ding, 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 you know? Think before you do that stuff. I mean, hello. You're opening the door. And we got to realize the doors we open. What we fellowship with, we open the door for that thing to be a part of us. If we fellowship with a movie that is got lasciviousness in it, and we need to say this over and over again because I keep, you know, keep, people keep um, rumoring around about the stuff that they go and watch. My goodness, just stay away from the movie theater. If it hadn't got the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost on it, you know, you can go to the movie theater. Go stand right out in the front and get a microphone and preach the gospel. That's a good place to preach, right there. We've done it a bunch of times, haven't we, Daniel? Right there in, in Edwards Cinnamon, Mir Mesa. Let the name of the Lord be known. But you, you watch that stuff, you're participating with it. You might as well just do it. You might as well just take part, you know, take part of it. Basically, because you're, you're fellowshipping with it so much in your spirit that eventually it's going to mess with you. Because that's what you're sitting you're fellowshipping with. Fellowship with the glory. Amen. If you've got time to sit down and do that stuff, fellowship in the realms of glory. Fellowship in the realms of His presence. Don't fellowship with witchcraft. Hello? That is from Satan, if you don't know. <laughs> if you have not figured that out, if it's witchcraft, it is not from God. He put out all witches. They were to be stoned. They, could, they were cast out of Israel. They were not allowed. And then you go and you fill yourself up with that kind of garbage? It's amazing what you preach about walking with Jesus and people don't put, connect the dots. You know what? If you just get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, you'll connect the dots. If you get so passionate to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, all the dots will connect. It's because you pull back from the realms of the Spirit and the realms of heaven that you get yourself caught up in that stuff. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You don't want to open the door. And men, you open the door for your family. And women and men that aren't married, <clears throat> especially young women, you want to watch that man you marry because he's, he's the doorkeeper of the home. It's first him than you. And, you, you know, the man opens the door and allows this stuff in, and it goes straight and messes with the kids. So you have a responsibility whether you like it or not. People don't like to take responsibility in this day and time. They like to do whatever they want to, when they want to, how they want to. I've come to do my will. <laughs> it's what it is. If you tell the truth, you can change. If you'll admit the truth, you can repent and change and say, not my will, Lord, but yours. What do you want me doing, Father? Not my will. Because men open the door to the family, the children are thrashed. Yeah. And when women open the door, same thing. Goes to the children, thrashes the children. I don't care how old they are. I don't care if they're six months old. It affects the children, the babies. They'll start crying. They know when stuff's in the house and it ain't right. And the kid will stay up screaming all night. Because the baby knows when stuff's not right. You have a responsibility. God's called you to be responsible. He's given you the will. Now you take that will and you choose to will his will. You choose to be valiant in the kingdom. You choose to walk out the word of God. It's not because you can't. It's because you choose. You choose because all of heaven is at your disposal. He baptizes you in the fire of the Holy Ghost. All you've got to do is be hungry and ask. Hallelujah. Everybody stand with me. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for the realms of your glory. We thank you, Father, for your presence in this place. We thank you, Jesus, that there's change tonight. We thank you, Father, that we just shake off those heavy bands, those things that have come against us, and we stand in the power and the authority of heaven. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name, we press in and we take a hold of whatever we have need of. And we're not allowing the enemy to touch, to touch our territory, 
to touch our children, to touch our family, to touch our finances, to touch our bodies in any way. We're taking the authority that Jesus Christ has given us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. And we're standing and we're taking ground. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for the glory of heaven. We thank you, Father, for breaking every yoke and every stronghold. In Jesus' name, in this place, right now, right now, right now, I thank you, Father, for your people pressing in and not being denied, not being denied anymore. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for the fire of heaven. Father, I thank you for strength in every person, Father, to go from this place and be a witness, to be the light of the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, to realize, to realize and to know that people are watching them. They're watching them and they're looking for the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ to be truly manifested in them because there's such a lack of it in this earth today. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that your light shines through every one of us. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. If there's anybody in this place that doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we'll be glad to pray for you. If there's anybody that is sick, you should already be healed because the truth sets you free. But if you need to go deeper, we'll pray for you. But I will tell you, you need to be hungry and desperate. You need to be determined that you are going to receive what you asked for. Or you might just go back home and get it again. And yes, I said that. I planted a seed. Because until you get desperate and get determined to believe God for what you have need of, you're going to just be oh, like a wave tossed to and fro. You don't want to be a wave tossed to and fro. You want to take a hold of the Word of God and believe it no matter what the circumstances say. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Father. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Glory and honor to your name. Thank you, Father. So if anybody wants prayer for any reason, we will be glad to pray for you. But uh, while we're getting ready to pray for people, we want to give everybody an opportunity to come rejoicing and worshiping the Lord with what he has blessed you with. And remember that everything that you have is because he's allowed you to have it. He gave you breath today so you could have it. He gave you life so you could have what you have. And we just want to worship him and thank him and just participate in this covenant that we have with him, that we worship him with the things that we have. And so everyone can come and and, and bless the Lord with that, with the offering that you have. And um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Glory. And if anybody needs prayer, we'll be glad to pray for you. Otherwise, everybody hug each other, encourage each other. Exhort one another daily while it's yet day. In Jesus' name. Amen.